Good morning, everyone, and I hope you're enjoying the Christmas countdown this month, as well as our Advent calendars every Wednesday. But today is Friday, and we're back taking another look at our custom LEGO Legend of Zelda custom set showcase. And today we're here with Z0007 uh, with 138 pieces, and the reveal is the Bokovlin Battle Pack. So today we're going to be taking a look at Z0007, the Bo Koblin Battle Pack, which is an army builder. And this is one of those things which I kind of wanted to include. They never really do battle packs outside of the Star Wars theme. But here we are anyway, because this is a custom set showcase with ideas that I think they'd be wise to follow. But also there's an element of wish. And while I think this is a really great idea that I hope there is a way to build um, common enemies like Bo Koblin and Lizalfos, um, yeah... It is still a wish and probably one of the less likely ones, although that is a shame. Anyway, we've got a couple of builds to take a look at and four figures which have never been before seen uh, on this showcase. But this set is rated 9 plus and contains four minifigures for the price of somewhere between 15 and 20 because licensing fees. Let's read this description and get on into it. Build your army! With the all-new Bokoblin Battle Pack, you can own your own personal horde of monsters to face off against your heroes. With four brand new and exclusive figures, you can cause all kinds of chaos across Hyrule. Build your defences, including walls and archer tower, as well as the campfire to keep the Bokoblins well fed. Don't forget to guard the treasure and keep the camp safe. Right, and on that note, let's see the build. So as you can see here, there are three main builds. We have that kind of wooden defense that you see in the Breath of the Wild Bokoblin camps, because I should mention this set is based off Breath of the Wild and uses the Breath of the Wild Bokoblin uh, mold as the kind of basis for their design. We also have a campfire built out of some bones with a wooden strut and a turkey and an interesting technique for fire and a archer tower as well as a chest for them to guard. Here are the quick overview of the figures though, with two red Bokoblins, a blue Bokoblin and a black Bokoblin. I'll talk more about their distribution later. First up we have the smallest of the builds and this one probably is filler, although I do like its inclusion because if you brought a couple of these to get a lot of Bokoblins, you'd be able to build almost like a fort shaped structure for them all to be in. And this is just built off a 1x6 plate with some supports out the back and a load of those curved 1x2s and slopes with angles to build up this dirty wooden pattern because in the game there are lots of white smears all over them and um, the rest of it. So moving on though, we have some more interesting builds to take a look at, including this one here. I took a bit of creative liberty with this one. As you can see, the picture up in the top right shows you the supported nature of the campfire and in this design there is a bone across the middle and the supports are wooden however the bone piece in lego is fairly interesting and works much better for a support so i decided to invert the design and use the bones to hold up the campfire and i think this just adds to this extra layer of detail and to those people that don't care at all about the builds or the figures would make this collectible just for getting a nice quantity of those parts not to mention the full turkey that is roasting on here, representing that meat that you would take off in Breath of the Wild, as well as using the Harry Potter ones over a uh, flammer headpiece to create a campfire effect. And yes, I am very well aware that that piece is the same one I use for the Sacred Flames, and I don't care. <laughs> Next up, we also have this Archer Tower, which is a very simplistic build with four supports, a ladder around the back and a club underneath. You can see a bit of dying foliage and a dark tan plate to represent that kind of lived in area underneath. You can see I've used some 1x6 tiles to bridge the gaps between the side and add a bit more detail, just like in the picture up above. I also added a little bit of a broken down rail that does not go all the way around and even has some curved detail around this side, leaving enough gap for the ladder as well as a mounted crossbow. I could not include the crossbow with stud shooter piece, although I would have liked to, as well as a normal bow piece, which I just forgot. One notable exception here is the lack of the skulls on the corners, and that is because I wanted this to be more generic and I think it works better like this. You could collect a lot of these, and that's one thing that I tried to keep consistent with all of the builds in this set. Having lots of them is not detrimental. Probably the oddest one is the campfire, but I don't see that as a huge problem. 
And finally, to take a look at I've got the chest over here in a separate image, because it's trying to be as similar to this chest as possible here. Now, you could argue that they'd make a nice new chest mold for this design here, but I disagree. I don't think that's very likely. So I use the pieces that we have to get the best kind of representation we have. So we've got the main chest piece in the center, that kind of central horn, as well as the big curves coming up the side. That's it for the build. So let's go on to the figures and talk about the main reason that anyone would be buying this set. And that is for this guy, the classic Red Bow Koblen. And in this wave, he is exclusive to this set. And at least it's a nice cheap way to get such easy fodder. And that's why I decided to make the Bokoblin battle pack the battle pack of the first wave. Because yes, I'd like to do a battle pack in at least one for every wave of this custom showcase that I do. But reminding me, uh, please leave your suggestions for wave 2 down in the comments below. I have now officially started designing a set, so uh, get on that so I can use your ideas. Anyway, um, this guy holds a club piece, which is either the existing piece or an, with printing, or a new design, probably an existing, and an exclusively moulded headpiece. I Lego-fied the skull that's on his chest and made it stand out with a different colour, represented the loincloth and gave him some dual moulded arms with those bandage patterns. We're about to see that there are two of these in this set. We also have blue one, which has a white Lego-fied skull, and this new kind of um, drape-like Tarzan that goes across him here. That signifies his extra rank, not to mention his colour change from red to blue, a different eye and mouth colour, and brown wrist straps to represent that bit of extra strength that the blue ones have. Finally, we have black one here, which yet again has a different colour scheme, a different coloured sash, skull, and uh, face, with those red eyes to represent that increasing malice in uh, effect that Ganon has over these guys. I did not include the white stripes because it did not work particularly well. I tried it and especially on the face it's too much moulding detail so I had to take a tone back but I don't think there's anything wrong with this guy and he fits more in line with the other two. Quickly before I go and take a look at the model in studio I want to quickly talk about the figure distribution. I chose to do a battle pack in this way so it was easy to build uh, fodder and I thought you guys would really appreciate this. However, I chose to include two red ones because they're the most common variant, a blue one and a black one. I was at one point debating just including two blue and two red, but there's no real good place to put the black one and he is more of a general than I think the blue one is. And I wanted to stack them like in their kind of rarity in the game. Red is the most common, so there are two of them. Blue is next, so there's one, and black is even less common, so there's also one. Ideally, there would be three red, two, sorry, two, um, two red, two blue, and one black, but four figures is the traditional number for a battle pack, so I stuck with this here. I also was tempted to include the silver variety, but I want to save that for a future set, so I just left it at this. Let's go take a look at that model. And welcome into the model here. And as you can see, we've still got our four builds here, no figures in here. And I also want to take a quick look at some of the details that you couldn't see in those main renders. So as you can see here, we have that Flama headpiece surrounded by the Harry Potter wand with a minifigure head inside to kind of create that flame depth. It's a technique that I really like to do. You can also see how I attached the uh, kind of spit to the center of those bone racks and it was a really hard angle to work with in studio but I got there in the end and it all worked out okay so that's great to see. Moving on I wanted to show you the back supports around the back of this thing as well uh, just to get you an idea of how that stands upright and how it will support itself when it's multiplied by what six battle packs or so however many you want to collect. We also have the tower here with the club in the bottom, uh, a load of rackety uh, boards all over it, and you can see those quarter tiles which I mentioned earlier. There are also two leafs on the floor, it's a piece that I like to use whenever I can. And then finally we have that chest, and there's not really much that you couldn't see in the uh, PowerPoint over there, so I'm going to go and say we're going to... And that's going to do it for the Z0007 Bo Koblin Battle Pack. This was a really cool one to make and I enjoyed sharing it with you. So let me know your thoughts on this set down below and your predictions and what you'd like to see in the future from my custom Lego Legend of Zelda showcase. And it's time for me to reveal what's coming next week.